to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave pair of peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is the Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted house, my very haunted house, where my wife and I live. Been quiet today. Might not remain that way. Yeah, Dreamcatcher's not doing too much spinning right now. It may pick up, though, with especially with my guest. She, uh, one of the most haunted people I know. And uh, I know that's why you all tuned in. So we will get her on here ASAP. Let's check the prayer urn. How was everybody's uh, Father's Day weekend? I hope good. Robin S. from Oregon. Oregon, love the new show. (laughs) Maybe that's my show. Scary Stuff, probably. Love the new book. Thank you. Scary Stuff, yeah. (laughs) What are the items in the kit and how do I use them? P.S. A good prayer for protection. Please. Okay. Um... The show, Eli Roth presents The Legion of Exorcists, Thursday nights at 10 p.m. on Travel Channel, Discovery Plus, and Max. That's my show. Um, I hope that's the show she's talking about. And if you guys have all watched it, I hope you enjoy it. Too scary for me to watch. I uh, love the new book. Thank you very much. And that's scary stuff, too. You know, my publisher always said that the my first book was the scariest book she ever edited uh, and published. But now she says I've changed my mind, and it's the second one. So that's just warning, throwing a warning out there for you guys. Uh, the stuff in the kit. Um, there should be Palo Santo wood in there. You just light it on fire, let the flame burn for a little bit, blow it out. It'll start smoking. Walk through the whole house, get the smoke everywhere. There should be sage, a sage, big sage stick in there. Same thing, light it on fire, let the flame burn for a little bit, blow it out. It'll smoke even more than the Palo Santo. Get it everywhere in the house. There should be blessed sea salt in there. And mixed in with the sea salt is dead sea salt, kosher salt, probably some black uh, pink Himalayan and some black Hawaiian salts mixed in with the blessed salt. You want to sprinkle the blessed salt on the windowsills on the inside of the house. Sprinkle yourself from time to time. Sprinkle it on the ground at the bottom of every door that leads outside. There should be holy water in there. There is blessed anointing oil mixed in with the holy water. You wanna put that on your thumb, touch your walls and physically make a cross. Bless yourself with it all the time. There's not a lot there, so use it sparingly. That's in the kit, that's what's in the kit. Oh, there's a blessed medal in there, a miraculous medal. Keep it in your pocket, wear it as a necklace, pass it on as a gift. It's a great thing about religious gifts to pass them on to someone that you feel may need it if you don't want to wear it. And I think that's all that's in the kit. And that comes if you buy the book from me, uh, not Amazon. It leaves my office here. I autograph it and send House Blessing kit stuff with it. A good protection prayer. You know what? Uh, I am going to recite one because I've had a lot of requests for that in the past couple of days, people having issues. So just on the... Outside chance, Robin, you're watching, and I'm assuming you are, and you may need this prayer. Crank the volume up on your speakers. Let's make this happen. And You know what? We're talking about the show, and look what I opened up to. I actually opened up to a prayer that I blessed the set with before we started filming. And I'm going to use that prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I offer this prayer up to Robin and anybody within the sound of my voice. In his name and by the power of his cross and blood, I ask Jesus to bind any evil spirits, forces and powers of the earth, air, fire, or water, of the netherworld, and the satanic forces of nature. By the power of the Holy Spirit and by his authority, I ask Jesus Christ to break any curses, hexes, or spells, and send them back to where they came from, if it be his holy will. I beseech thee, Lord Jesus, to protect us by pouring thy precious blood on all of us, 
which thou hast shed for us, and I ask thee to command that any departing spirits leave quietly, without disturbance, and go straight to thy cross to dispose of as thou sees fit. I ask thee to bind any demonic interaction, interplay, or communications. I place all of us under the protection of the blood of Jesus Christ, which he has shed for us. Amen. Yeah, you know what? They have that on film, too. Me uh, doing that prayer before we started filming on set. And maybe one day they will show that during one of these episodes. I don't know. But, yeah, that's the prayer I used to bless the set. Hey, Sean, I wanted to let everybody know that Facebook was having problems last week with your show. And uh, if you want to, if you wanted to go back and watch Sean's show last week, make sure that you go to his Facebook or to his YouTube channel, or you can go to Things Network YouTube channel. You can go to Pact uh, YouTube channel. Facebook has been having some problems lately. Um, unfortunately, Sean's is not the only show that's uh, been experiencing that. I know that uh, Jeremy from Things Network was having problems on Thursday night. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there was a lot of freezing and there was even one where it just completely took your show off. Yeah. But um, we're hoping that Facebook has this fixed, but, you know, we're not Facebook. We can only I I'm a only half trained button monkey, so I'm not that I'm not that skilled at this. So. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, if you want to go, you want to check out uh, things, face, uh, YouTube or packed YouTube, you can find that show there uh, from last Friday. So very cool. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it was really weird. But then I saw an announcement on the Internet that um, it was worldwide, major, major Internet issues, which which did affect Facebook. Fortunately, Zach's. A uh, personal downloaded copy from um, StreamYard. He was able to email me, and there was nothing wrong with that one. I downloaded that one and then sent it to my YouTube channel. Then I shared it everywhere to the page you're watching now and all over my social media stuff. So if you want it, and that was a great show with um, Jenny Sullivan Sinyasi from Ireland uh, last week. So let's check the mailbag real quick. If this is a great question for my guest. I'll save it and we'll talk about it. Peter B. From, from Florida. She's in Florida. This is meant to be. Do you have a fave piece of ghost hunting equipment? And least fave. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. I do, but I'm going to ask my guest about that because it's meant to be. This guy's in Florida. She's in Florida. Uh, if there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, wwwghost b Dot, dot, huh, I don't even know my own website. <laughs> there it is. is yeah, I was going to say, here you go. Just read, Sean. Just read. Oh, my gosh. www.ghost-b-gone.biz. Everybody always wants to know, who thought that name up? My wife. True story. I asked her one night, what do you want to call our team 20 years ago? She said, Ghost Be Gone. And then everybody wants to know if we're the Ghost Be Gone that makes the, the spray like this, like the sage spray that says ghost be gone no we're not that ghost be gone okay go there a lot of cool stuff to see my wife and i don't charge for our ministry work helping people with their paranormal issues so brothers and sisters trust me i know times are tough but if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so click on it and send my ministry in a small donation i promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts and trust me we'll put it to good use I'm also a certified spiritual advisor, so if there's uh, you're having issues of a spiritual nature, not paranormal, and you'd like to uh, talk to me about them, there's a place on the website where you can make an appointment to speak with me. Don't leave without checking out the page called in Introduction to Spiritual Warfare Course slash book. You'll find the ghost store on there. A lot of cool things to buy if you go for that sort of stuff. And part of the proceeds of everything you buy on the ghost store goes to support causes that I support. But scroll a little bit further past that, and you will find not one, but both of my books now. God, Ghost, and the Paranormal, <laughs> God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry, book one. God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry, two. Twice the Rev, twice the Fun. 
Both books are there, a little less expensive at Amazon, but you can get them off of the website. They come from my office here. I autograph them and close them in a house blessing kit and send them to you direct from me to you. So um, if you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my books go to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So you get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals too. How cool is that? Scroll a little bit further past the book, down on that page, you'll see in the Introduction to Spiritual Warfare course. I offer a 12-week online college-level course, uh, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, for all you true warriors for Christ out there that want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, putting up a good fight against, God forbid, true evil if it ever comes calling. That's the course for you. No, it's not going to teach you how to be an exorcist. That's a completely different calling. But this is introduction to spiritual warfare through my eyes. Things that I've seen, learned, and how, uh, what works for me and how I've battled these things over the years um, for laity and clergy. This is a good course. All my students that graduate get a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed gifts and items that you can only get from yours truly. You can enroll in the course there at the website. If you want more information about the course before making that type of commitment, there is a Introduction to Spiritual Warfare course Facebook page. Or just call me. We'll talk about it and see if the course is right for you. Most importantly, please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. Thank you. Okay, the moment of truth. I love her. I respect her. She's very cool. Um, And that's why you guys all tuned in. You all feel the same way. Paranormal authority, radio, TV, film personality, elite ghost hunter, buster, author, you name it. Just appeared on a ghost hunter adventures, but we won't ghost adventures, but we won't, we won't hold that against her. (laughs) Please give a big, Warm Paranormal Ministry family, welcome to the one and only Heather Lee Landon. Hey, Sean. How are you? Good, and you? I'm hanging in there. I (laughs) promise we won't hold it against you (laughs) being on Ghost Adventures. I kid. That was a great, yeah, I don't watch the show. I don't watch, Mm -hmm. I don't watch my own show. Um, I just don't do it. Um, I don't know why, but I did watch that one because I knew you were going to be on it. Well done. It was a great episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do I also want to tell you besides you got very pretty pink glasses on tonight. Uh, I got my my dark blue ones on, not the light blue ones on today. And Zach has his regular old brown ones on. I, I Hopefully he's not listening. I'm going to get him a really funky. You know, my producer should have a really you know, funky pair of, of mm-hmm. specs. I'm going to get him one for Christmas or next Father's Day or his wedding anniversary or something, but, um, how are you? Oh, me. Sorry. I thought you were commenting to the comments on there. It's been one of those days, huh? It's been a long day. Uh, Things have been great. I've been busy and staying out of trouble the best I can. (laughs) Um, Probably easier to stay out of trouble in Florida than it is here in Las Vegas. I know you're yeah. from Las Vegas. Um, we I asked you this in the in the green room if you mm-hmm. um, missed coming coming back and doing the episode if you missed being in Vegas and you let me know that you'd filmed that over a year ago. Mm-hmm. It's so amazing to me how like sometimes they these networks spit stuff out real quick. Sometimes it takes them forever. Like um, like they reached out to me for my show before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how that stuff works, but well done. And while we're on the topic, I know everybody's going to know (laughs) what it was like to be on ghost adventures. Yeah. I don't, you may have been on there before. I know you've been on other shows, but um, I know the girls probably want to know if Zach's as sexy in person as he is on film. (laughs) Um, Was he nice to you? How was it filming that episode? And then we'll get into, um, haunted lake mead 
Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we actually filmed it uh, virtually. So what you see oh, on, the, on the show bummer. is actually what happened. It was all done through Zoom. And uh, but they were actually at Lake Mead when it happened. But before we filmed and even after we filmed, Zach took the time to talk to me. That's so and cool. I don't really want to answer if he's as sexy as he looks on TV because my husband's watching upstairs. Okay. <laughs> but I think he knows the answer. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of a crush going on there with Zach. <laughs> very, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, that, gosh, that show, how long has it been on? 20 seasons now, I think? If not more. Yeah. Good yeah. for them. And he's had a lot of spinoffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's got his museum here. Have you ever been in his museum? No. No. I haven't either. The person I didn't get to. I haven't been in this museum either. Shame on me. And I live here, you know. <laughs> I, I um, I'm always, years. I'm always, you know, <laughs> preaching para unity and support mm -hmm. your, you know, your, your. What do we call each other? Do we call each other colleagues? Yeah, support your colleagues in this field. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been there. You know why? I'll tell you why. My wife, we're both survivors of extreme demonic attacks. Mm -hmm. We 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 have spirits here. Um, we've driven by there before, and uh. He's probably going to send me hate mail for this, but there's a little bad mojo there. There's a lot of mm -hmm. bad things in there that I believe have some bad mojo attached to it. And my wife and I are both very sensitive. We we got that feel just driving by the place, so mm -hmm. we just never really felt the need to go in there. But maybe we will one of these days. But um, yeah, I love. Go ahead. I'm once. sorry. Oh, I'd only driven by once, and I know that exact feeling. And it was just the reason why we never made it is it was first of all our son wasn't 16 and not old enough to go in. So and he really wanted to go. So I kind of felt guilty going without him. And it was also so we lived almost in Boulder City. In Henderson, and it took us forever to get there in the traffic. We we avoided traffic in Vegas as much as possible. Do you remember, now I've only been here, well, I've been here about 10 years before I met my wife, and then we've been married 20 years, so about 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, let me see, yeah, 30, 40, 50, so, yeah, 30 years. She's been here probably 40 years. She rem remembers a time where you could drive from the dam to past like where Summerlin, Summerlin is, mm -hmm. or even maybe even out to where you would maybe turn off to go to Mount Charleston within like maybe 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now you're talking probably an hour and a half, two hour drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, that was one of the reasons why we were glad we left. Um, okay. I'm going to ask you this question. We, you mm -hmm. and I both know, you've written a book about it. You and mm -hmm. I both know that uh, Vegas is very haunted. A lot of places haunted here that people don't even know about or even talk about. A lot of mm -hmm. locals know about a lot of the places a lot of other people don't know about. Um, you can pretty much close your eyes and put your finger down on a map and decide just to drive out there. A couple of hours mm -hmm. in any direction out in the open desert, you're, you're going to stumble upon a ghost town. Mm -hmm. um, some that no people know about, sometimes st structures and stuff that people don't know about. Yeah. Um, you can find spirit infestation everywhere out here. Talk about where it is you live and compare the two in terms of um, degrees of haunts, amount of hauntings, and the types of hauntings. Or which place, if you care to give an opinion mm -hmm. on which place is more haunted, where you lived yep. at here and where you live now. It used to be out in Vegas and Nevada would be, I used to consider that more haunted just because of the research I had done and the investigations. And I had been in the paranormal field long before I moved to Vegas uh, doing research here in Florida, but it wasn't until I started doing research on my new book that's coming out next year, um, Haunted Florida Ghost Towns, that I realized Florida has almost as many ghost towns as Nevada does. Wow. They're old forts, they're old um, settle settlements that were destroyed during the Seminole Wars. And it's just, and stories left and right, and people coming out of the woodwork to share their stories. I, I'd say if Florida is not more haunted, it really is a close tie between the two states. You mentioned your husband's upstairs watching. Hi, husband. <laughs> um, I have to ask you this, because my wife and mm -hmm. I, were we, we were set up on a blind date. Mm -hmm. And we just really hit it off. And we almost immediately found out we both had uh, a passion for investigating the paranormal and ghost hitting stuff. We were both sensitive. We both 
you know, really, really have this feeling like we knew each other in a past life. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have that in common. And I know many couples where the husband's really into the paranormal, the wife not so much, and vice versa, Mm -hmm. the wife's full-blown ghost hunter, husband, no, no thanks. How is that relationship between you and your husband? Uh, Well, I'm the full-blown ghost hunter. He was skeptical, and I still think he is. And he goes along to, he actually just commented, hi, so I know he's watching now. Um, (laughs) He actually goes along and listens to evidence and does different things, um, I think, to try to disprove it or to try to, as he puts it, to keep me grounded. That's very cool. At least you guys uh, have that in common to uh, uh, agree to disagree. Exactly. And it's a, it's a healthy approach to it. And, uh, and I think that's very cool. Um, let's talk about this question that okay. this guest who's from Florida, hopefully it's not your husband. Is your husband named Peter? No, no. Okay. <laughs> so this wasn't a, a, a set up question. No. <laughs> Do you have a fave piece of ghost hunting equipment and least fave? Uh, and I do, and I'm going to let ladies go for There's no wrong answer here, okay. and all the hate mail will come to me anyway. So <laughs> see, I know you've done your fair share of, of, of ghost hunting over the years. What yep. do you think? Uh, see, everybody loves my idea, and there's a lot of people who come to me saying I never even thought of it. But my favorite piece of ghost hunting equipment is um, I have light-up fidget spinners. And I set them in a hallway. They're all different colors. And you can talk to the spirits, you know, hey, if you're here, spin the red one, you know, or you can do yes and no questions, you know, spin the red one for no, the green one for yes. And there's just so many different things you can do with them. And you can see them in the dark because they light up. And it's funny, I had a, we were hosting an event um, out in Nevada and one of the guests said, can I show you something? So she whips out her fidget spinner and sets it up and she made sure it wasn't, you know, lopsided or anything that it was flat and stable and she was like hey you know i use this at home because she her home is haunted she said and she uses it to talk to the spirits all the time and she started asking questions and slowly it started spinning and ever since then that that's, i have six of them that go on every investigation with me <laughs> very very cool very very cool we had um if zach could pop up the There's two questions back. There was one. I didn't want to interrupt Mm -hmm. you. It sounded like it was a paranormal one. And I thought maybe uh, I would try to answer that question. I'm trying to get better at that. I'm terrible at it. (laughs) I I think it was uh, Josh made a comment that he's skeptic, but he tries to disprove by thinking what he can do. Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right. Here comes the part where we're going to get, I'm going to get hate mail. And I'm only bringing this up because I just did a test with a guy. Um, he called me up telling me that he just bought an SLS and he's a ghost hunter and this SLS is picking up these stick figures that he thinks are ghosts all over his house, wherever he sets it up and lets it film. And I hated to break it, break the bad news to him. And I, I can't, you know, I can't prove that these stick figures aren't ghosts, but I know a lot of professional gamers. I know a lot of professional guys that, that design those, those types of piece of equipment for for big game companies. Mm -hmm. And they say it's a, the SLS is a very good piece of equipment, but it's a game equipment Mm -hmm. and it's not designed for ghost hunting. And what the thing is designed to try and, and lock onto your figure or another person's figure. And it, when it's, there's nothing there to lock onto, and it's just trying and trying and trying. Then it throws out the stick figure, mm-hmm. and it's actually technically malfunctioning when it does right. that. Yep. Um, so I'm not a big fan of the SLS. Mm-hmm. I told the guy, let's do let's do a test here. Don't use it for a week. What are the kind of equipment do you have? He says, Well, I have you know um, really nice full spectrum high def. Um, camera. I have a full high def, full spectrum video camera and a couple of uh, infrared motion detection trap cameras. I said, set all that stuff up in whatever area in your home you think is the most active and let's have this conversation in a week. Mm -hmm. None of his other equipment caught anything. I don't know what we all want to take from that or or not take from that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a big fan of the SLS equipment, but I get a lot of people 
I don't know if you get this too, but I get a lot of mm -hmm. new up and coming investigators coming up. Some just want to do it on their own. Don't know how some want to either form a team or join a team. Mm -hmm. And I tell people this all the time, you, you definitely get some training, either form a team and get some people on the team that are experienced or find an experienced team that's taking on new investigators, jump on that team first. As far as equipment goes, I tell people, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. My wife uses dowsing rods and a throwaway <laughs> camera from the drugstore. I mm -hmm. have a couple of nice cameras, but you are your own best piece of equipment. Um, that's what I tell people all the time. So what do you say to the, all of these people that either come to you or that are coming to me that mm -hmm. want to get in this field, the biggest do and biggest don't? Uh, well, the first off is the biggest do is to research as much as you can, especially with the SLS cameras, for example. Um, do experiments, do test studies. We um, had a member on our team when I was in Vegas. He had one that he just built out of curiosity. And we discovered, you know, if you're standing in front of a glass window, it's going to shoot the reflection back to the camera and make it look like there's a spirit in the window kind of mocking you. Um, if you're standing too close to a wall, if it's a shiny um, satin finish, it's going to, you know, glossy or satin, it's going to shoot it back to you. Um, so you're going to have reflections on the wall that read as if it's a spirit behind you. And it's not, it's just your reflection. And people need to understand how equipment works, whether it's your digital voice recorder, your camera, you know, even dousing rods, learn how they work in order to be able to effectively use them and to be able to quickly identify when something is not paranormal and it's just a glitch in whatever you're using. I did not know that. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Even these yeah. gamer guys didn't tell me that. I wonder if they mm -hmm. were purposely holding that information back <laughs> from me. Uh, I did not know that. That's very, very interesting. Um, what else do I want to ask you? Um, entities. Mm -hmm. So right now, we have all kinds of people coming to me with all kinds of reports of uh, alleged spirit activity in their in their homes, whether it be um, disembodied human spirits. Sometimes they believe they're angelic forms. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they believe they're interdimensional beings, possibly extraterrestrial, maybe something worse, some demonic. Um, in your humble opinion, there's no wrong answer here. In your humble opinion, do you believe that there are many different type of interdimensional, and I'm going to even lo uh, throw in disembodied human spirits into that into that interdimensional mm -hmm. being thing. Do you believe that there are many different types of interdimensional entities visiting people? And if you have a, a best guesstimation on how many different types, you can throw elementals in there if you want. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think I, I'm getting from all of these different? types of, of uh, reports, and from what these people tell me, they, they sound like they're being visited by different types of entities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's a tough call. I mean, I don't think we can ever put a number on how many there are out there, because you have everything that is either based on religious beliefs, um, personal beliefs, um, to actual why a person is being haunted. So you have everything, you know, self-manifestation. Some people aren't haunted, but they're manifesting the activity themselves. And then I know a lot of people that I've been <clears throat> researching with lately that they're doing research on whether or not some of the paranormal activity we have is not ghosts, but more, you know, aliens finding, you know, a wormhole or something to get to us and help out, you know, help out and, or even cause the paranormal activity. And they're approaching us in a way that we're comfortable you know, in the aspect of like family members coming and seeing us. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, these people, some of them get uh, visitations that are very violent. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's usually for me, if it's, um, you know, there's a lot of biting or scratching or punching or these, these visitations are sexual in nature, I, I tend to lean towards malevolence, uh, probably demonic, uh, but some of these visitations, like uh, I talked to a lot of people that believe ETs have come to them um, mm -hmm. interdimensionally wise and visit them. Some of them are very friendly. They take them on these, you know, outer body 
mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, viewing adventures. <laughs> Some of them are violent. It's like mm-hmm. a, an abductee right. where they're they're messed with physically, but but I don't believe these are demonic. And then you've got the uh, disembodied human spirits, mm-hmm. which I believe. I believe this. I, I don't know if you do, but I believe that if they really, really want to get a message to you and you're just so hard headed, you don't you're just not getting it when you're mm-hmm. awake, that they really try to reach you yeah. in your dream state to mm-hmm. give you these messages. So I believe some of that's going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, elementals, I believe that's going on, too. It's just mm-hmm. um yep. And angelic beings, you know, people mm-hmm. talk about seeing these angelic figures. That's not the same as, you know, uh, being taken on an astral, you know, trip mm-hmm. by some extraterrestrials. These angelic beings are, are very angelic, like mm-hmm. angels come and visit you and show you things or tell you things or mm-hmm. take you places, which I find very interesting. Mm-hmm. But um, these reports are all over the charts. The different yeah. types of uh, of uh, of visitations. I find it really interesting. What's the most interesting, or scary, or amazing case that someone's brought to you and says, "This is what's visiting me," and what do you think, and can you help? Um. Oh, real quick. If you guys lose me, or if lights have been flickering with the thunderstorm going on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wanted to let you know real quick. All right. Oh, I keep you guys. The power stays on long enough. You guys get them bad there in Florida. Yeah. 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 And it's we're at that time of year where they're nonstop. Um, but the one case that kind of intrigued me a little bit was um, we had a client that reached out to the former team that I was on in Vegas, and they had um, a lot of activity was happening. She believed it was demonic in nature, um, based upon the daughter dabbling in witchcraft and the mom and the daughter used a Ouija board and the daughter just didn't know what she was doing. So we sent in the team, the director sent in, I think four individuals to do the pre-investigation and talk to her and do the interview and everything. And when they came out, they said it was 100% demonic and that we needed to go in and investigate a second time. So a different group from the team, um, some of the more, I guess you, I'd really don't want to say more experienced ones because we all pretty much had the same amount of experience Um, went in and it was basically the ones who did more residentials than the others. And upon getting there, we had, it was, it wasn't demonic, but it was a negative entity that was acting demonic to kind of get us to go away. It, the investigator I was with, his eyes turned solid black. He lost track of time, had no Ah. idea where he was when he came to. Um, That was when I was physically attacked and brought down to my knees Um, encountered face-to-face a huge shadow figure that was like coming face-to-face with um, the refrigerator from the bears in the 80s. (laughs) But it was all solid black mass in the closet. And when we were in the bedroom, we um, actually, I had even forgot about this part of it until I was reviewing evidence again for a presentation I'm working on. But we were in the bedroom and the daughter had a makeup stand Um, kind of like her vanity to get ready. And then her dresser with a mirror facing each other. So the two mirrors were facing each other. And during the investigation, the um, light from the shining on the mirror started shaking. And then the vanity started shaking. And it was real interesting. But once I cleansed, I went through the home, we saged it, I used cascaria and um, someone else. Cascaria. It's crushed eggshells that's used in voodoo and hoodoo. But what we ended up doing is going through the house because the daughter had practiced witchcraft. We use that in addition, you know, thinking that if it was a pagan entity there, that we would use that to help cleanse it. And then someone followed behind me with holy water, you know, because that's what the mom believed in. And the minute we finished that last um, cross and cascaria sprinkle in the house, the house got brighter. Wow. It was like and nobody turned on any additional lights. It just got bright. And we were really happy with what happened. We wanted to go back and investigate one more time to see if it worked, but she sold the house. That reminds me of a case I worked in. I forget what country, uh, mm-hmm. God forgive me, I forget what country this woman was from. She was uh, from a country where they, uh, how she got it into this country, I don't know, but she had mm-hmm. the skull or a couple of skulls of some loved ones. Mm-hmm. It's tradition in her country. They keep the skulls 
of their loved ones after their loved ones have passed on. Mm -hmm. And then they, they keep them uh, and they offer them gifts all the time. They talk to them all the time. And um, we had to, you're right. We had to approach that, that activity and haunting as though we were dealing with Mm -hmm. uh, these spirits of former loved ones. Mm -hmm. Um, And once we did that, once we bought into that whole theory and that's what was happening and approached it that way and we're addressing them too, Mm -hmm. things got better. It was very interesting. You almost, sometimes it's like people throw around the term when in Rome, but sometimes Mm -hmm. you got to, you, 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 yeah. It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, to and make if the activity better. is self manifested, doing something that falls in line with that person's beliefs gives them confidence. And that's sometimes just enough to stop the activity if they're the one manifesting it. If we don't lose you, I love mm-hmm. the, the thunderstorm. That's like, <laughs> special, like we could have asked for better special effects for this topic, you know? Mm hmm. <laughs> okay, here, while we're talking about equipment and all these beans, mm-hmm. um, like I said, I, there's there's no rhyme or reason. I'm not an expert. I don't have all the answers. My wife has caught some wonderful evidence on these mm-hmm. little throwaway 35 millimeter cameras you get at the, at mm-hmm. the drugstore. Um, I've caught in some, I think I've caught in more on my full spectrum cameras than anything else. Um, but you know what's interesting? I don't get many pictures of spirits in mirrors. And I don't catch many Mm -hmm. pictures of demonic entities straight on with the lens. I get a lot of um, darker, more malevolent apparitions in reflections of mirrors. Mm -hmm. And um, you've got these people out now that are really, or they claim to be, and I, you know, like I said, I don't judge and I don't dispute that they're angel photography. They're taking these pictures of angels. Mm-hmm. And when you look at these pictures, um, I, having seen, having claimed many times to have seen my, my personal guardian angel three times, all three times she saved my life. I don't know if it, she looks like a young lady, but she could be, mm-hmm. No sex, no man or woman. I, I, her angels don't really have a sex. Um, I believe it's my guardian angel, but she appears to me as a real person. Um, I don't know if what these people are catching in, in these in these photos are angels. I, in my humble opinion, I think an angel will appear to the person that's made. To, when you know there were people around when these. Uh, on two separate occasions, when I saw my guardian angel, there were mm-hmm. people there that didn't see her. Yeah. I believe that the guardian angels or the angel will appear to the person they're meant to appear to and no one else. What do you believe these people are catching in these angel photographies? Do you believe it's actual some type of angelic beings or maybe extraterrestrials or just disembodied spirits that happen to when they're appearing in this film, look, look angelic with the wings and all that. Right. Um, nine times out of 10, just because um, before I went into my paranormal science degree, I do have a degree in photojournalism. Um, so nine times out of 10, I do have to say it is um, camera defects, uh, reflections, um, light anomalies that are caused by the different lenses, especially now that we've switched to um, digital. I know a lot of it's, you know, even lens flare, coming from depending on how your face I've seen people take photos of a mirror and there could be just one little fingerprint smudge and when the flash reflects back it spreads out like you know some of the angelic stuff Um, but if you're actually taking a photo I mean angels or you know angels or even spirits they don't need a window or a mirror to manifest if they're going to manifest you know it's going to be right in front of you or, you know, I have two pictures that I think are great evidence, but of course they are through windows. So, you you know, it's 100%, you have to rule out th- certain things. But when it comes to your guardian angels, no one else is going to see it. So why are they going to want to be captured on camera? Yeah, I, I've got, uh, you know, uh, lots and lots of photos that I, I 
think there's something paranormal there, mm -hmm. but because I can't prove it, I, I've never shared them. But then mm -hmm. if I've captured something and I can attach a personal experience to it, those are the ones that I share or at least show mm -hmm. to my people in my inner circle and say, check this out. At the time I was experiencing this and then this is what mm -hmm. I got on film. But that's that's invaluable. That training in your in your uh, film school, that's invaluable. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's funny because we've the two that we've caught is um, one was in Goldfield when we were actually filming Real Hunts Ghost Towns. And we were just shooting photos of the downtown area of Goldfield. And there was we're at the hot hotel and just down the road, there's a little brown building that used to be used as a brothel. And we snapped three photos back to back and we were far enough away that you could see there was nobody between us and that building. And in the third picture, if you zoom into the window facing us, you can see the outline with a little bit of a glow of someone standing in the window. And it's not a reflection. It's actually you can tell it's behind the window, which I thought was really neat. Um. My Goldfield days, my wife and I used yeah. to go to that every year for many mm -hmm. years. And uh, why all of a sudden we stopped going, I don't know. Um, I, I don't even remember what time of year that is. Is that like right in the middle of the summer or later on? In the I think it's August-ish, August, September. Yeah, a little bit later because it's too hot, mm -hmm. like right in the middle of the summer to have that. Um, I know you've been asked to come out and do an event there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to let me know, even if you come back this side of the country just to mm -hmm. go there to attend goldfield days mm -hmm. let me know that would be mm -hmm. worth it for me and my wife to make plans to mm -hmm. at least go up like on a saturday and spend the day just to to uh finally meet you face to face mm -hmm. hang out with yeah. you <laughs> talk a little shop maybe go investigate a couple of the locations we've we've been in just about every haunted location there i remember it was early on when they were just starting to let people in on day or night tours of the hotel. Mm -hmm. And this was right after uh, early Ghost Adventures episodes were there. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a big deal. And um, yeah, that place is just unbelievably off the charts haunted. I remembered they had some bad experiences, not the one on the show, but they had some bad experiences with investigators going down into the, the basement. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a rope up on the top of the stairs. And so the, the group had moved past. I went to walk down those stairs and it was just like my foot, something would not let my foot mm -hmm. go down to that first step. And it was like hot ice box, <laughs> hot ice box. Um, amazing. And it I was George I thought, Winfield probably telling you to go away. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to go down there. And it was like, you, you think about uh, photos that you take that you, you have an experience mm -hmm. that attached to it, but you know, everybody else is going to look at it. And go, ah. right. You know, the rumor, the girl was attached till she died while well, she, mm -hmm. she had, they chained her to the, uh, mm -hmm. what are those things? He old fashioned heater. Heater yep. in this secret room. And then uh, she has her baby, the baby's murdered. Then she's murdered. Um, they opened up that room and I remember taking photos in there. Sharon felt her presence. I had a picture of Sharon looking up and there's an anomaly right above her. Mm -hmm. But then I took another picture and you know, that weird little window behind the, uh, old fashioned heater mm -hmm. yeah. that is like a, a fake, like it's a fake window, but it was an event. So that mm -hmm. some air could come into the room. So the woman wouldn't suffocate to death. I don't know why that was important because they murdered her anyway. <laughs> but I there's a there's a it could be make matrixing the window could be dirty, mm -hmm. but there is definitely the face of a woman in that fake window mm -hmm. looking back above the the heater, uh, and I still have that photo. I think it's an amazing mm -hmm. photo. But like yeah. again, I can't prove that that's her. Right. But that um, anything weird happened to you in the Goldfield Hotel? No, no, actually I was, um, I only stepped foot inside the lobby real quick. We did, um, cause we didn't have, we were up there filming for a uh, pilot uh, just before COVID hit in February, 2020. And we didn't have time to do too much inside the hotel. So it was like, we stepped in, looked at the lobby and turned around and then did a quick investigation around the outside and left. Um, but no experiences. It did feel like someone was watching from what would have been room 19. 
And I know a lot of people who've had experiences there. And actually in my first book, I have several paranormal investigators share information about that hotel during interviews I had with them. And I know a team just went last weekend and they said the energy's kind of changed. It's no longer, doesn't feel the way it used to feel. Interesting, very interesting. Um, you know about the tunnels there, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I even offered to sign a release form to go down to that. Uh, it's it's like a hidden in the bar area, mm -hmm. uh, a tunnel that leads to the uh, red light district. Yep. And uh, the rich guys would go in there and pretend they were gambling. And when the wife wasn't paying attention, they would take these tunnels <laughs> over. I, I wanted to go in these tunnels, but I... Uh, and I probably would have got down there and got too scared and came right back out. But uh, I offered to, you know, sign a release to go down in there. They they wouldn't let me go down mm -hmm. in there. But um, yeah, that's a very interesting place. Um, you know, it's been up for sale many times. If you're gonna buy it, you've got to be able to afford to fix it up. Yeah. And that's I think the the down why nobody's been able to do that. You've mm -hmm. got all these people that can afford the price tag to buy it, yeah. but then the it's uh, just insurmountable mm -hmm. amount of money it would take yeah. to fix that place back up yeah um it just it's just you can't it can't be done right that's think. why there's several of us who want to start hosting different events out there and um you know donate the money back to to try to help renovate it and get it renovated before we run out of time i want to mm -hmm. make sure everything that you want people to know about you you talk about your show, your book, um, how to get a hold of you. Just the show is yours for however long you need to just tell everybody they need to know about you. Okay. Uh, to start off, the website I have is listed there, heatherleephd.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Dr. Heather Lee. Um, of course, my first book was Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns, which covers everything from Tonopah um, down south past Boulder City. And that was what was featured in uh, Ghost Adventures. Right now, I do know it is out of stock, but um, I do have a few copies available. So if anyone wants an autographed copy, they can reach out to me. Um, Ghosts and Legends of the Vegas Valley, which I have behind me. And that's the one that you uh, wrote the forward to, which I absolutely still love. <laughs> I, I am, God, forgive me. I, I forgot I did that. You're, you're I, on the cover. I love that book. It says right there. Um, I, <laughs> I am get, you know what my my mind is my I'm telling you my mind is gone. You forgot um, you wrote that. One of these days I'm just going to wake up it's not even going to be me anymore. My wife's not going to know me and some else somebody else who be doing this show it'll look like me. It's just uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's did, right. did I do it? Did I I I like I love the book. Mm -hmm. Did I do did I do a good forward? Yeah, you did. Yeah, my publisher loved it. They loved it. Because I love you too. Yeah. And I I don't I get asked to do that a lot and I don't like to say no to anybody. Mm -hmm. And um and so I, you know, and if it's somebody that I really know and respect like you, um, mm -hmm. I want to do a good job. And I know I'm not a writer, I'm not Stephen King. Mm -hmm. So um if you're happy with it, then oh, yeah. I'm happy. It, it turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> um Go ahead. I'm sorry oh, I interrupted okay. you. What else do you want people to know about you? Um, we, I also do have, it's off to the press, waiting for that to come out, but Haunted uh, Haunted Florida Lighthouses will be coming out September 11th. And I am currently, the two books that I have contracts for four more books to come out next year. The one I'm working on right now is Haunted Florida Ghost Towns and Haunted Florida Roadside Attractions. So I have those going on. Um, I actually host a radio show on WLTK DV Talk Radio Tuesday mornings. And that is exploring the paranormal for two hours from 10 to noon. Every other Wednesday, I have Ghost Education 101, which I co-host with uh, Philip Wyatt. And Sean, you're supposed to be on it in a month or two, I think. I got to check the calendar again. I think so, yeah. <laughs> How's Philip doing? He's doing great. He's looking forward to having you on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I so know Wednesday we have Johnny Zaffis on, so that's going to be a fun show. So Johnny that's Zaffis, when you bug him, bug him to, you know, I've... I've I know he's busy. I know he's the mm -hmm. godfather. I always call him the godfather of soul. I know that's James <laughs> Brown, but I know he's the godfather of the paranormal, mm -hmm. and he's busy, busy, busy. But I've reached out to him a bunch of times, and uh, okay. I, I never hear back from him. <laughs> oh, I'll talk to him for you. <laughs> I'd love to have him on the show and, and talk to him and uh, uh, just pick his brain on a few things, mm -hmm. bug him about a few, few yep. things. 
But um, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, no, that's finish. Okay. And then the only other thing is a new um, a new project that we started is a podcast on Thursday nights. Um, I co-host with Joe Frankie, who trained directly side by side with the Warrens. And him and I just kind of get on and just shoot the crap back and forth to each other. I'm always picking on Joe. And it, it's just a fun, entertaining show while we try to still also educate other people about the paranormal. And I know Howard commented earlier. Um, I'm hoping I'm still doing everything I can. But I'm, is it Fear Fest, Howard, out in New Orleans? Um, they want me to come out there. So I'm hoping to get out there to do that. And I'm still waiting to hear, but there's a lot of um, small events and conventions that I'm up for, but I just don't have confirmation yet to say yes or no if I'm part of them yet. Anything in New Orleans, you know, is going to be cool. Oh, I know. <laughs> very, very cool. And a lot of people don't realize, like down where you're at, a lot of people always think that the Southern hoodoo, voodoo mm -hmm. stuff and all that weirdness is all just down there in the new orleans but no it stretches all through that bible belt mm -hmm. area and down into florida yep. too um mm -hmm. real heavy um you yep. know not too long uh, i spent was it probably four hours on the phone i kid you not i had my phone was plugged in I had my earbuds mm -hmm. in um you know on guys on camera it's a, a cajun guy mm-hmm whose family is convinced he was a loop guru. And I do believe that some forms of lycanthropy mm -hmm. is a demonic possession. So I was interested in this because they have him locked in a shed. And they make him sleep in a right. shed at night. And he had like, you know, Zoom or Skype on him, camera on him, and mm -hmm. we're talking and walking. Uh, the most memorable thing about the evening was that he was a big, he was a fan of a, of a group called the Meters. I had never heard of them. And then I realized one of the, one of the Neville brothers started the band and I liked the Neville brothers, mm -hmm. but he had every single CD of this band, the Meters, played them all the whole time we were on the phone. So I got to listen to all, every single song done by the Meters. Mm -hmm. And now I, I'm a big fan of the Meters, but I'm talking to this guy while he's in, locked in this shit overnight wanting me to watch him turn into a loop guru and his whole family i'm telling you this guy's a got a you know a, a, a business a, mm -hmm. you know a money-making business down in the in the bayou there um intelligent person family intelligent family nobody seems weird or drugged out or alcoholic nothing of that going on mm -hmm. but um he you know he didn't turn into a loop guru but it was still a great experience. But there is some deep seated. I mean, I believe I was stalked by a vampire in New Orleans about mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning when I was there in the French Quarter, staying in an old haunted hotel for a concrete convention of all things, like 25 years ago. And I was out doing some ghost hunting on my own late at night in areas that I was told later you shouldn't have gone those areas. But I, I think. Uh, some something followed me back to my hotel room. Some weird dude, and um, you know, I just call him. He acted like a vampire. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably wasn't, but yeah. there's a lot of weird stuff going on down in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, Rem reminds me of Charleston. I remember one year we checked into our hotel, and we were told to not be outside of the hotel after ten o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always that's always good. Yeah, That's they're like, if you don't want any trouble, don't leave this hotel after 10. I, I checked into my hotel. I think it was called the St. Croix. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, when I walk, I walk away from the counter after checking in, and this woman tells me, don't, whatever you do in your room, don't leave, don't leave hair in your brush or your comb, whether it's facial hair. I had a goatee at the time. Don't mm -hmm. leave any facial hair or hair from your head or any other part of your body, if you comb those parts. Um, in your brush or your comb, take it with you, put it in a bag and throw it away. Don't leave it for the housekeeping. I thought that was really, really odd. I know that has to have something to do with the hoodoo thing. Yeah, or um, they're going to set you up for murder <laughs> somewhere else. I don't know. But after <laughs> after I got this warning and I went to check it, went to get on this uh, elevator, I turned around to talk to this girl and she was gone. Mm -hmm. That freaked me out. I didn't know if I really experienced this woman or if it was a real woman and she just 
took off real quick. If it was a spirit, I don't know. But then, of course, the room was off the charts haunted also. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, New Orleans. Um, let me know if you end up going to that event. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I might surprise you and pop up at <laughs> one of these events one of these days if it's at a real cool place. But yeah, you got to go to mm -hmm. New Orleans. I, I know. We're just we're in the process of buying a house. So I just need to make sure the timing's right with my schedule. But I'm doing everything I can to make it happen. Oh, my gosh. Well, we got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to try and ask you something that won't take you more than a couple of minutes to answer. Okay. I have, I'll try. I have, I have a little pit. Well, let me look at my questions here. I probably already asked you questions of everybody <laughs> that sent them in to them. Yeah, pretty much. Without even looking at them, some of the fans and followers of yours sent in some of the things that I've already asked you about. But I have a pet peeve about something. Um, I wish they would change the name of the poltergeist activity to something other than poltergeist. Because we know poltergeist means noisy ghost. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, do you buy into the phenomena of an adolescent, whether it be a female or male, going into puberty in this home? Mm -hmm. They have the ability of telekinesis. They don't know it. Mm -hmm. Of this, they're able to manifest out what seems to be a violent haunt. Mm -hmm. In my honest opinion, I'm not sold on the telekinesis thing. I do believe some of these real violent haunts are usually always demonic because spirits too throw things, but mm -hmm. spirits usually never throw stuff at you or really get physical with you violently wise. They may pull your hair, poke mm -hmm. you, shove you a little bit, but the real violent stuff that always gets told that's a poltergeist. Right. I think they throw that poltergeist on it because all of a sudden it's just as quickly as it came, it's mm -hmm. that on that quick. I'm on the fence with the telekinesis thing, but I, I, I think they should come up with a different name. They, I think they should because they have developed um, the activity, uh, actually learning more. And now that I've researched it a little bit more, um, I kind of am on board with it being self-manifested to a point. Because um, talking to my mom when I was a teenager, of course, um, things would happen in the house that we couldn't explain. And we never had activity in that particular house outside of my grandfather coming and visiting me a couple times. And we had a brand new um, Chevy Beretta GT. And on days that I would be upset or angry, all of a sudden the horn would start. And it was like someone just laid on the horn. And my dad would go outside, he'd hit the horn, try to do it. He actually had to disconnect the fuse to get it to stop. Next day reconnected the fuse, car was fine. You know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months go by, it happens again. So it wasn't like it happened same time, same, you know, or anything like that. And we just couldn't figure it out. Took the car in to get it checked. Nothing wrong with the car horn. And learning what people are saying about poltergeist activity now, I have a feeling that that might have been connected. Well, we all just witnessed you make the thunder and lightning go away. I know it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I respect love you. Can't Thank wait you. to talk with you again. Give Huggy a big, give husband a big hug for me. Okay. Um, thank you so much for spending an mm -hmm. hour with me and my paranormal ministry family on a on a stormy Monday night in Florida. Um, I pray for you often, Thank you. and uh, I can't wait to see you again. Yep, sounds good. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye bye. Heather Lee Landon, uh, Florida. Thunderstorms in Florida. I wasn't born in, in Cold Snake, New Jersey, but many, many years as a young lad growing up there, back on the East Coast, man, thunderstorms out there, nothing like they are out here. Um, they're, I mean, they're brutal on the East Coast, the thunderstorms. Okay, guys, um, I'll be here. I won't be back. I don't know. Uh, I know Zach's got plans, and I got plans this Friday, too. No, no live show this Friday. He may or may not. He may go dark. He may do a best of, not sure. But I'll be back with an all-new live show next Monday. And I can't wait because she took a little break. Now she's back. This Monday, next Monday, June 26th, Happy Medium Monday is back with the Happy Medium herself, Susan Ahern. If you ever wanted a free psychic live on air reading, that's the night you want to tune in. You got to tune in live. Type your question in for Susan to the chat room. She'll read it. She'll give you your live reading right there on air. That's next Monday night. Um, thank you to Zach and Adrian Clayton for co-producing my show. I couldn't do it without them. Um, co communitypayitforward.us.
Go there. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Just go there. USOCC.org, the church I belong to. Check out the website. You might be surprised. If you like uh, Bible study on Wednesday and Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m. Pacific, um, or night prayer, which is Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, go to bishopjameslong.com or usocc.org. You can find the links to all those things if you want to be a part of that. And they're both beautiful things to be a part of. Thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT, Little P, capital A-C-T, Podcasting for All Coming Together channel, for all these networks simulcasting my show. God bless you. And BeInspiredRadio.net. That's Chicky Hot, the rock psychic. That's her radio network. She re-airs audio episodes of my show Saturdays all day, along with some old Art Bell reruns. Very cool. And a lot of other really cool new shows there. So go and check out BeInspiredRadio.net. Eli Roth presents The Legion of Exorcists. Thursday nights at 10 p.m. on Travel Channel, Discovery Plus, and Max. And I hear that's a scary show and a good show. Okay, it's bad joke time. I'm going to pull a bad joke that one of you sent in out of this haunted Carnival Barker hat. And it's my poor attempt to put a smile on everybody's face before I say good night. Why shouldn't you write with a broken pen? Because it's pointless. I tried to work with my delivery on that, too. Did you like that? (laughs) Uh, Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, Dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace.